from Wish TV and the All Indiana Podcast Network. This is the News 8 Daily 8 Podcast. A Wish TV News 8 update. Hi, this is Hannah Mordeaux, and this is your News 8 Daily for Wednesday, September 4th. You might want to have a jacket out there this morning. It's going to be a cool start early, but don't worry. By the time we're hitting this afternoon, we're going to be to normal temperatures in the 80s. In fact, the muggy meter is going to climb a little bit in the second half of the day. This season, Instacart has your back-to-school. As in, they've got your back-to-school lunch favorites, like snack packs and fresh fruit. And they've got your back-to-school supplies, like backpacks, binders, and pencils. And they've got your back when your kid casually tells you they have a huge school project due tomorrow. Let's face it, we were all that kid. So first call your parents to say I'm sorry, and then download the Instacart app to get delivery in as fast as 30 minutes all school year long. Get a $0 delivery fee for your first three orders while supplies last. Minimum $10 per order. Additional terms apply. Have you ever covered a carpet stain with a rug? Ignored a leaky faucet? Pretended your half-painted living room is supposed to look like that? Well, you're not alone. We've all got unfinished home projects. But there is an easier way. Thumbtack is the app that makes it easier to care for your home. Pull out your phone and in just a few taps, search, chat, and book highly rated pros right in your neighborhood. Download Thumbtack and start caring for your home the easier way. For the first time in eight years, the Indiana Fever are heading to the playoffs. The Fever clinched their spot last night without even playing a game. That's because the Atlanta Dream and Chicago Sky both lost last night. It means the Fever can finish the regular season no worse than tied for the eighth and last playoff position. Fever hold the tiebreaker over the Dream and the Sky. We do not know who the Fever will play yet, but the first round will be a best of three series later on this month. Caitlin Clark has another reason to celebrate too. The Fever Guard is now the WNBA's Eastern Conference Player of the Week for the second week in a row. Clark averaged 24 points, nine assists, and five rebounds a game as the Fever went 4-0 last week. Clark and the Fever return home tonight to take on the Los Angeles Sparks at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock. To keep up with the Fever and their playoff run, check out Wish TV's brand new sports app. You can find our sports team coverage, everything from high school to the pros. So grab your phone, go to your app store, then download the free All Indiana Sports app. Turning now to IT Mate, police say a man charged with stabbing a 14-year-old girl at a baseball game in northern Indiana was in the country illegally. IT Mate's Cody Fisher talked to the coach who saw it happen over the weekend. Matt Ramian says he was coaching third base when he saw Dimas Giannis attack the sibling of one of his players. The Lake County Sheriff says Giannis was in the country illegally after being deported in 2018. It just didn't feel real, didn't feel right, it didn't feel like this was actually happening. And then- Ramian says the 14-year-old girl was sitting on the bleachers by herself when Giannis walked up, pulled a large knife out, and attacked. Just started swinging it, just started swinging this knife on her like two, three times. And then he jumped off, took off running. He pulled the knife out on two other people as he was running. And it was just insane to watch because I'm on third base just trying to get the boys off the field. That's when a group of dads chased after Giannis. He escaped, but police found him the next day running out of a cornfield. According to court documents, Giannis told police he's from Honduras and entered the United States in 2022 through Texas. He said what he did was not intentional, and that someone was following him and told him to do it. Everybody wants to know why he chose her. Like, was she just because she was the only one on the bleacher? Was it because she was, maybe he thought she was vulnerable? No one knows. Ramian says the victim continues to be strong despite what happened. She's a soldier. Yeah, she's she's a trooper, man. She's doing really well. She insisted on going to school today, and her mom told her, you know, you should stay home. And I know she wanted to go to school, so she did. The family wants privacy right now, but in a statement, the mom of the teen praised all of the first responders who helped and said, this is a hard time for us and still in shock and haven't processed that this is real. You don't believe this can happen to you, and when it does, it's a shock. The community came together to search for the suspect on their days off and immediately chased him. It's just so amazing how many nice people there are in the world to come together to catch the bad ones. Ramian does not want this incident to give all immigrants a bad rap. If you're coming here in a good manner and then you have something like this happen and it gives them a bad name just because of that, you know, that is sad. What's that saying? One bad apple ruins it for the bunch. 
Now the baseball coach who saw what happened told me they're going to be holding a fundraiser soon to help pay for the medical bills and potential therapy for the teenager. For IT Mate, I'm Cody Fisher for Wish TV, wishtv.com and follow us on Facebook for updates. We're still working to find out what led to the death of a person who was found dead in a pond on the far east side. Police and fire crews were called just before 4 yesterday afternoon to the pond on Gulfstream Drive near East 21st and German Church Road. That's in the Maple Creek subdivision. IMPD says homicide investigators responded, which is standard, but they don't know yet whether foul play may have been involved. The coroner's office has not released the identity of the person they found. Police are still looking for the suspect after a driver says he was shot on 465. It happened at around 1.20 yesterday afternoon in broad daylight on 465 near Michigan Road on the northwest side. Troopers think the man was driving eastbound on the interstate when someone in another vehicle fired shots at him. The victim then drove himself to the Meridian Street exit and waited for help before being taken to the hospital. Investigators tell us the man's injuries are not life-threatening. A cold case closed. Police make an arrest in a 31-year-old murder case. Investigators say 19-year-old Carmen Van Huss was raped and stabbed to death in 1993. IT mates Kat Sandoval has more on how detectives tracked down the suspect decades later. And for my dad to have to find his daughter after what was brutally done to her, makes this day bittersweet. I wish he was here to see it. Van Huss was stabbed 61 times on the head, face, and body. She was taken from me when I was a freshman in high school. And I'm thankful that finally the man that did it is where he needs to be. 52-year-old Dana Shepard from Missouri was arrested. Detectives matched his DNA to that of the crime scene through genetic genealogy analysis. Shepard was charged with two counts of murder and one count of rape with deadly force. What they've had to deal with over the course of the last 30 years, understanding that they are still grieving the loss of their family member, of their loved one, while the person who we are alleging is ultimately responsible for these acts is walking around and enjoying their freedom. The case went cold for decades. It was only through this new DNA genealogy analysis that the investigators were able to get their breakthrough. Today is not a victory lap. Today is really just providing that closure for families. And I know there's so many families in our community that don't have that closure. Van Huss's mother didn't say a word in the press conference, but her actions spoke loudly. There's a lot of people that miss Carmen all these years. She had a lot of family, a lot of friends. Police tell us a hearing will be scheduled for Shepard to be extradited to Indianapolis in the next coming days. Reporting in Indianapolis, I'm Kat Sandoval, IT Mate, Wish TV, wishtv.com, or follow us on Facebook for updates. A federal judge says the state's Medicaid agency likely violated federal law. That's because the agency forced families with children with special health care needs off the state's attendant care program. Judge Tanya Walton Pratt ruled in favor of two mothers whose children need 24-7 care. They were the last two parents receiving state funding for attendant care after other families were shifted to the Structured Family Caregiving Program on July 1st. Judge Pratt's ruling says the two mothers suing the state should also be moved to Structured Family Caregiving. But the judge also says the Family and Social Services Administration must arrange for the families to get in-home skilled nursing services on top of that program. A new study from a real estate company says it's better to buy than rent a home in Indianapolis. The real estate company Clever says it used data from the federal government and other real estate agencies to determine home affordability here in the Midwest. Their survey shows renting is generally more affordable than buying a house, but it also shows Indianapolis is still affordable compared to other Midwestern cities. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me that Indianapolis is on anything that has to do with housing prices, whether it's rent or buy. Um, we've been we've been affordable for a long time and that's what's really attractive about Indianapolis being such a big metropolitan area is it's still kind of affordable to live here compared to a lot of other places that are around our size. The company says the average home price in Indianapolis is just under $264,000 with the average monthly rent at almost $1,600. Wish TV is focused on food. The Colts are making a $1 million donation to support a program aimed at combating childhood hunger. It's part of an innovative school program that will help school kitchens provide food for students. News 8's Raina Revel talked to leaders about the program's impact. This innovative school model transforms kitchens just like this one. Now a culinary hub known as the Colts Commons, it'll serve over 450 students with access to a variety of healthy meal options. 
least what I grew up with at school lunches, was the tried and true standard school lunch. And now uh, we've transformed that by using fresh ingredients, scratch made meals, to really get kids excited about what they're eating and to actually ask questions, be inquisitive about what they're eating. This new school model will not only restore working kitchens within schools, but also provide comprehensive support by hiring and training culinary staff to prepare scratch made meals. The initiative is expected to provide over 1.2 million meals to 3,500 students over the next five years. We are blessed because we are in an old established uh, IPS building, so they already had a huge kitchen from you know the 1960s. So we were able to walk in and say, what can we do to enhance it, and what do we need to make available so that a scratch-made kitchen can be possible? This project is known as the second largest source of hunger relief in Indianapolis schools, and will be sourced from the proceeds of the Colts game day 50/50 raffle. One of the schools benefiting from this is Adelante Schools at Emma Donnan School Number 72, who are already providing those nutritious and exciting meals for students. Before we were seeing foods and packaging that would just get heated up and the students kind of knew it wasn't that great and now they see the scooping of the food or they can smell the food as it's being made throughout the day and get excited about what food they're eating that day. According to the Patichu Foundation, one in five kids are food insecure. Students say they are big fans of the new food. Uh, the, my favorite dishes is the um, teriyaki chicken with rice and then my my first is um, the pizza they serve on Friday. The efforts of the Indianapolis Colts and the support of their fans have created a game-changing opportunity for students in the Circle City. Everyone first assumes that there are a lot of barriers. We can't make this happen. This is not possible in every school. I think what I want the community to know is start asking how to make it possible because we're seeing the transformation happen not only in our school but other schools across the city and hopefully this can expand because every kid deserves to have access to high quality meals in schools. Reporting in Indianapolis, I'm Raina Revel for Wish TV, wishtv.com, or follow us on Facebook for updates. Some of the biggest names in sports hit the links in an effort to help IU keep up in the race to compensate their athletes. IU men's basketball coach Mike Woodson hosted his 10th annual golf outing yesterday. Woodson says it was a great way to bring players of past generations together the way his former coach used to do. We've had some, some wonderful players that come back. We had a big reunion this past weekend for the football game where we had a lot of guys back. So I'm just trying to keep us all together, man, because that, that's what Bob Knight would want because he started the process many years ago, and we, I'm trying to continue it. The golf outing raised money for IU's name, image, and likeness program that pays student athletes. This has been your News 8 Daily from Wish TV. I'm Hannah Mordo. Watch us on wishtv.com and follow us on Facebook for updates. Achieving a gorgeous grin from home isn't a total mystery with Bite Clear Aligners. Just don't be surprised if all of your sleuthing friends start asking, What's your secret? Begin by ordering your at home impression kit today for only $14.95. Bite Clear Aligners are doctor directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces. Plus, they offer flexible financing, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B Y T E.com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. What makes a life a good one? Is it the adventure you have or the friends you find along the way? Maybe it's pursuing your passion while striving to protect, defend, and save what you believe in every single day. So what makes a life a good one? In the Coast Guard, we think it's all of the above and more. But you'll have to find out for yourself. Visit GoCoastGuard.com to learn more. This is the News 8 Daily 8 Podcast, a Wish TV News 8 update on demand. For even more, on demand and on the go, connect with Wish TV on Facebook at wishtv.com and on the free Wish TV mobile app. Thank you for listening. And be sure to like, subscribe, and follow this podcast for updates every weekday morning on the All Indiana Podcast Network and wherever you get your podcast.